Donald Trump has announced that he won't be meeting with President Putin on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Argentina. It was due to start that summit on Friday. Let's get more on this cross to uh, Khaled Mopin. He's in New York. Bring us up to speed on Trump's last-minute decision. This meeting's been on, off, on, off. Now we hear it's on again. Well, I wonder what off again. What finally triggered Trump's last-minute decision, do you think? Well, it's quite interesting. Just two hours before Donald Trump tweeted out that he was canceling his meeting on the margins of the G20 summit in Argentina with Russia's president, just two hours before he was making reference to that upcoming meeting. Now, some are looking at what's happening in the United States uh, uh, because at this point, not much has changed with the, the Ukrainian sailors and that whole situation. There haven't been any new developments, really. So people are looking at what's been happening in the United States. And it's important to note that uh, in court today, uh, regarding with a plea deal made by Michael Cohen, uh, Trump's lawyer, uh, apparently it's been revealed that negotiations regarding the Trump Tower, the possibility of building a Trump Tower in Moscow continued well into the 2016 campaign, and that uh, that the talk of allegations of the collusion, uh, you know, that that's been big in mainstream media in the United States in the aftermath of that plea deal and that announcement that was made in court. So some are looking at it and wondering if this is possibly influencing that decision. But uh, of course, there's no way of knowing. But it appears uh, that that this meeting that was long awaited on the margins of this important international gathering, the G20 in Argentina, it looks like this meeting is off. The official reason is given related to the uh, the developments around the Ukrainian sailors, but others are wondering if there's there's something else going on there. Khaled, thanks for that. Sorry about the bit of a delay there. Thanks very much. Right, let's go to Neil Clark now, uh, journalist and writer. He's on the line to give us his thoughts about what's happening here. Hey there, Neil. Thanks for coming on at short notice. So, Mr. Trump has reportedly decided to drop that uh, much vaunted tater tate, tate with Putin after talks with uh, John Bolton and Mike Pompeo. How much was this Trump's decision, or was there a lot more going on behind the scenes, do you think? I think the only surprise about this is that anybody's surprised by it, because as you said in your intro, it was on, it was off, it was on, and it was off, it was on. <laughs> and now it's off again. Yeah. I think that bearing in mind what happened this week in, in Ukraine, in the Crimea, that it was always likely to end this way, that it w was going to be off. Uh, I think that uh, Trump, in many ways, was damned if he did and damned if he didn't, because uh, we've heard that the Democrats are now saying, well, you know, he should meet Putin and tell him what's for and tell him to get out of Crimea, et cetera. But of course, if he had said, yeah, I'm going to go there and meet Putin and, and, and try and solve this out, he'd have been accused of appeasing Russia. Uh, appeasing the aggressor, Russia. So really, uh, whether he met Putin or didn't, uh, he would be attacked, uh, mm. whatever he did. Well, he's laid down the gauntlet situation. now and says these Ukrainian vessels and the sellers must be free to return to Ukraine. Is he in a position to really mm. make those demands? What's the leverage he's got here? I don't think he has got much leverage, Kevin, at all, really. And I think what's happened is that if you think back to what the White House was coming out with, say, three days ago, it wasn't really taking that much of a of a stance on this. But in fact, what's happened is the mood music, the sort of anti-Russian neocons have been uh, screeching for the, uh, the, the US to take a stronger line. And that's the sort of context in which he has to operate. This is not trying to excuse Trump at all. He is the president after all. But of course, we know that Russia phobia, this anti-Russia, some would call it hysteria in the US, uh, is really uh, driving whoever's in, in politics really to to to, to take a to be yeah. seen to be taking a hard line. I mean, the more pragmatic may say, if you've got a problem, try and meet with someone face to face to sort it out. And that seems to be the view yeah. with some U.S. Democrats. Surprisingly, they wanted the uh, two presidents to meet and have a, a, a chat or a more in-depth meeting at the G20, particularly one that's standing out, um, Senator Bob Menendez. Let's listen to him come straight back. Should be coming up any second now. We're just lacing it up. Here it comes. It's Bob Menendez, just to remind our viewers. We just learned from the president that he's announced that he's canceling this meeting with Putin. Are you happy to hear that? No. I, I would have liked him to meet Putin and challenge Putin. Yeah, I mean, would that have happened uh, publicly? Probably not. Behind the scenes, you don't know what's happening. What do you think that meeting would have brought? I know it's all ifs and buts now because he's to be off, but what could it have brought to the party? Well, I don't think it would have brought much to the party, really. It was only going to be a relatively brief meeting. And I think they've got to be realistic here that basically the, uh, we've got to analyze really what's behind the, the current uh, US, uh, Russia, uh, the new Cold War, we could call it. And I don't think there's anything that could be sorted out in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or even in an hour. 
I think there are forces at play here, Kevin. We've got the military industrial complex. We've got the neocon think tanks. We've got the US energy industry, which is very keen, the LNG industry to push Russia out of the European energy market. So you've got all these factors actually at play. And yeah. this would really require a lot more, a lot more discussion, and a lot of, more really. There's another school of yeah. thought, of course, that the timing of this Kerch. So you could, you, we could surmise all night about this, but the timing of what happened in the Kerch Strait just so uh, quickly before the G20, just a couple of days before, and the ramifications of it. I wonder if there's any tie in there. Um, uh, President Putin saying it was a provocation, as far as he saw it. Well, could well be, and it could well, could well be, we don't know, it could well be the case, of course, the Ukrainian government really didn't really want to see Trump beating Putin because they would feel that they would fear that they, the men might get on well together uh, mm. and, and might come, you know, might even in a short space of time come to some kind of movement or rapprochement that would kind of uh, ease tensions between the US and Russia. And of course, we've got to remember <clears> that there's a, people out, a lot of people who don't want that to happen. They really don't want Russia and the U.S. to have better relations. So yes, it could well be that that, that what's happening in Kerch this week could be connected to to the G20 and, and trying to, to 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 try to prevent or sabotage a meeting between the U.S. president and the Russian president. Yeah, I mean the footnotes all this. I'm just looking at the uh, to tweet that was sent out by jo uh, Donald Trump earlier on, uh, further to him saying that th th there wouldn't be a meeting. Uh, he then went on to say, I look forward to a meaningful summit again as soon as the situation is resolved. So let's watch this clock. Watch RT. We'll tell you all about it. Neil Clark, for now, thanks very much. A journalist and writer on the line from the UK there.